Here's bromine. It's a bizarre element with particular properties. It's a reddish-brown liquid at standard conditions. It likes to evaporate even if slightly moved, giving off a dark red vapor. Bromine is annoying to work with for this reason. Another is it's very toxic and corrosive, similar to that of chlorine. If you ever drank Mountain Dew, you've interacted with bromine in compound form. Mountain Dew uses brominated vegetable glycerin. Bromine is a strange element, so let's make some. Bromine can be made through pool chemicals, but I want to take that one step back and start with a natural source. The ocean contains bromine, but that's a relatively low concentration, only about 65 parts per million. We could boil down a bunch of seawater or exploit natural processes to concentrate the bromine, a process that happens at the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is a natural sump where water flows in but not out. The flow here carries salt to the body of water, but due to no flow going out, the salt adds up as the water evaporates out. The constant flow of salts in to the sea creates an incredible salinity solution. The water here has the highest bromide concentration of any body of water, with approximately 5200 parts per million. Comparing that to the 65 of seawater, you can see why the Dead Sea is a significant producer of bromine. Unfortunately, tickets to the Dead Sea cost more than my yearly budget for my videos, but luckily for me, eBay exists. Pure powder Dead Sea salt shipped right to my door, all dry and ready to go. It's important to note that the selling of Dead Sea salt is unregulated. That means you may get fake salt. In my testing, I found that some people just sell regular sea salt and say it's Dead Sea salt. I begin by dissolving the natural dead sea salt in just enough water to dissolve it completely. Some natural insoluble materials may be left undissolved. When the salt is in dry form, the bromine is bonded to other elements such as sodium or magnesium. But when it dissolves, it becomes an ion of bromine, bromide, Br-. We want this ion to become an element of form, to extract the bromine from the solution. The superscript of negative means it has an extra electron. The bromine needs to be oxidized, aka lose those electrons. Oxygen quickly comes to mind when we consider oxidization. Hold on, one second, there's going to be some basic math and basic subtractive theory here. Don't leave. To make sure this reaction can work, we use what's known as a half equation. Bromine's half equation is 2Br- equals 2E- plus Br2, with a negative 1.06 volt potential. An oxygen equation of H2O equals 2E minus plus 1 half O2 plus 2H plus with a potential of negative 1.23. Rearranging to cancel out electrons, we get 2E minus plus 1 half O2 plus 2H plus equals H2O with a positive potential of 1.23 volts. Then adding them together, we get 2Br minus plus 1 half O2 plus 2H plus equals H2O plus Br2. And we get the potential of a positive 0.17. A positive value here means that the reaction could carry out. We can test this by bubbling oxygen through our salt solution. We see no reaction takes place because of the reaction rate being too slow to form any bromine. We can try another gas that has an oxidation property, like chlorine. Chlorine has a half reaction of 2Cl- equals Cl2 plus 2E- with a negative 1.36 voltage potential. Once again, rearranging for electron cancellation, and we get the equation Cl2 plus 2Br- yields Br2 plus 2Cl- with a positive 0.30 voltage potential. Bubbling chlorine through the solution, we see it turns yellow and then red. This is bromine being produced. The chlorine gas was generated in situ by using a gas generator, consisting of an equalized dropping funnel filled with hydrochloric acid, a vacuum flask filled with pool chlorinator, on a stir plate to allow mixing. There was also a stopped cocked gas takeoff which allowed air to be forced into it 
aiding in the movement of the chlorine gas. The bromine can also be forced out of solution by heating and pumping air into solution. Now the problem is, we need to collect that bromine in some way, and condense it down into a liquid. For this, we need a reaction vessel. I used a 3000 milliliter 3 neck flask as the main reaction vessel, and this allowed two bubblers to be held in. The bubblers are connected and sealed by using thermometer adapters. The middle neck allows a condenser with ice water to be used. The condenser leads to a collection flask and a gas takeoff. This allows pressure to escape from the system. The solution in the funnel trap is sodium metabisulfide. This neutralizes any bromine vapor. I changed the trap out to a larger one due to splashing as gas came through. Chlorine generation is started and is bubbled through the salt solution. The bromine forms once again. and passing air through the water and heating it, the cloud begins to migrate to the condenser. The flask slowly darkens until liquid bromine begins to condense and run down the condenser into the collection flask. The collection flask is in an ice bath to lower the volatility of bromine to aid in collection. After a while, no bromine began to condense on the condenser and just water was coming over. I didn't want to overwhelm the system with water and mix too much water with the bromine, so I stopped the reaction. The flask still had a dark reddish tinge to it, so a lot of bromine was lost here. The bromine that I collected wasn't enough to be able to do a purification step. The purification step just consists of mixing sulfuric acid with the bromine product in a separatory funnel and sloshing back and forth. The sulfuric acid acts as a dehydrating agent which then pulls water out of the bromine. This gives you water-free bromine. Here's the collected bromine, but this isn't the best way to store it, so I want to switch it out to an ampule. You can store it in glassware like this or in labware, but that's best for temporary storage because it'll slowly leak out over time. So I'm going to switch to an ampule and seal it in there for long-term storage. This is done by using a primary ampule blank, which then I transfer the bromine into it. I then cool it back down and allow the bromine to become less volatile using ice. I then warm it up slightly and do a quick seal. Next, I cool it back down for a little bit, which then condenses all the bromine back into a liquid. This pulls a slight vacuum in the ampule, which then I'm able to use that vacuum to seal the ampule further. Then, cleaning up, we are left with a beautiful ampule. The process here is an excellent demonstration, but impractical for lab bromine production. A lot of unnecessary equipment is needed to produce bromine. The best method is still to use pool chemicals, or the pragonate method. Yield is also relatively low for this method, as it takes a lot of salt to make little bromine. A lot of bromine is also left over in solution, as it's hard to separate bromine from such large volumes of water. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.